Okay, we're going to be talking about Aristotle's six rules today. Before we do that, I want to get you set up to talking about them. So uh, get your textbook and maybe some scraps of paper to stick in the page numbers I'm going to be giving you. I've got the page numbers up on this screen for you to, to find easily. Uh, first, let's start at page 164. Grab a piece of paper or a pencil or something to stick in there. This is back where we talked about the distribution of terms. That topic's going to come up again today. I told you when we talked about it that it was uh, not terribly exciting or interesting, but that would come in useful later. Well, today it's going to come in useful. At the top of page 164, you've got the uh, chart that we came up with. We talked our way through A, E, I, and O in the tutorials, and we saw where each of these um, attributions comes from. Remember, a term is distributed if what's being said about the term applies to all members of the group that's being addressed, and the term is undistributed if what is being said does not apply to each member of the group. For example, here's an A statement, um, all dogs are mammals. We know that the subject dogs is distributed because we're saying all dogs. The subject is always easy, remember, because if the, if the form is all or no, then that means distributed. If the term is some in I or O statement, then it's undistributed because obviously if we say some dogs are brown, we're not talking about all dogs. Okay. Uh, the predicate, back to our A statement, all dogs are mammals. The predicate, mammals, is undistributed because we don't know about all mammals. All dogs are mammals. We know about all dogs, but we don't know about all mammals. And so the predicate is undistributed. Well, we talked about all that when we talked about it. I'm just trying to remind you of what we went into great depths to deal with in that tutorial, in which we did. Now, at the bottom of that page, you have a simplified form, where the A statement, for example, says all S prime D is P prime U, all S D is P U, in fact, I'm going to be giving that to you down here. You can see the cursor moving. I'm replicating that little diagram for us. So all this does is summarize for you what you have at the top of the page, and that which we talked about in great detail when we went through it in the tutorial. So if you're looking at that chart and are kind of confused, then go back and find the tutorial where we went through it, and um, you'll be caught up. But the top chart on page 164 tells you that for an A statement, let's say the statement here, all S distributed is P undistributed. In an A statement, all the subject is distributed and the predicate is undistributed. For our E statement, we're just replicating the chart that's at the top of page 164. No subject, the subject of an E statement is distributed, is the predicate of an E statement is distributed. Again, you see that up at the top of page 164. If you can't figure out this little chart, then hit pause on your, um, on the video here until you see what it is we're looking at. Um, if you need to go back and review distribution, then go back and review distribution because uh, that will help you as we go on and look at the six rules. The next page to mark is page 214. Uh, I'll work through this with you because this is going to be a, a review, but I'll work through it with you. So go ahead and stick a piece of paper on page 214, where we look at some vocabulary words we will be, and then go to page 243 where you have the list of Aristotle's six rules. So find some scrap paper, stick it in 164, 214, 243, and we'll be ready to move on. Okay, now if you go to page 215, actually I sent you to page 214, but 215 is across the spread there. On page 215 we have some vocabulary words, and on the screen I've got some um, syllogisms for, you, for us to look at. 
We're just going to talk our way down through these vocabulary words. All right. Um, I gave you on the screen the syllogism you see at the top of the page. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. And then I gave you two other syllogisms. Some dogs are mammals. Some cats are mammals. Therefore, some dogs are cats. And a third syllogism. All squidgems are knockwheels. Some bullquirks are squidgems. Therefore, some bullquirks are knockwheels. We'll work through these in a minute. Uh, but let's get the vocabulary down. In each syllogism, I'm going to just read through the bold print in the middle of page 215. There are three propositions, two premises, and one conclusion. In the top of, at the top of the page, we see our two premises. All men are mortal. That's one premise. Socrates is a man. That's another premise. And therefore, Socrates is mortal. That's our conclusion. When we lay things out nice and neat like this, it's easy to see what the conclusion is because we have the word therefore there. Sometimes it's difficult to pick out in the paragraph exactly where the author is headed, but we'll look at that in a little bit later today. Uh, the other th uh, two syllogisms you see there each have three propositions, two premises, and a conclusion. There are three terms in each syllogism. Let's take up here the top one. One, one um, term is men. Here we have a singular man. One term is mortal. We have mortal up here and mortal down here. And the other term is Socrates. Socrates is here and Socrates is here. So we have three terms and each term is used only once. Let's take the second syllogism. We have three terms, dog and dog, mammal and mammal, cat and cat. Our third syllogism. We have three terms, and each of them is only used once. Squidgems and squidgems, bullquirks and bullquirks, and knockwheels and knockwheels. Each syllogism has three propositions, three terms, and each term is only used once. Our next vocabulary word, the subject of the conclusion, is called the minor term. Let's take our top syllogism. What's the subject of the conclusion? You're right, that's Socrates. So Socrates is the minor term. The predicate of the conclusion is called the major term. So the predicate of the conclusion is mortal, that which is mortal. That's the major term. The next one's a big one. The term which appears in each premise, but not and the conclusion is called the middle term. What's the middle term of the first syllogism? Right, man, men. Second syllogism, what's the middle term? The middle term is the term that does not show up in the conclusion. What term down here does not show up in the conclusion? You're right, mammals. Down here, third Syllogism. What term does not show up in the conclusion? I know you already figured it out in giving time for the slower members of the class to figure it out. Squidgems. I knew you were already there. Squidgems. Okay, so squidgems is the middle term down here. The premise containing the major term is called the major premise. Socrates up here in the first syllogism was the major term. So which premise contains the major term? That would be Socrates as a man. The minor premise contains the minor term. The minor term is the predicate of the conclusion, mortal. So what would be the minor term? All men are mortal, the first premise. Let's run through these using our third syllogism. We have three premises, or rather, three propositions, two premises, and one conclusion. The major term is the subject of the conclusion, so bullquirks is the major term. The major premise contains the major term, so that would be 
some bulk quirks are squidgems because bulk quirks is the term that is the major term here. The minor premise has the minor term. The minor term is the predicate of the conclusion. Knock wheels is the predicate of the conclusion. So all squidgems are knock wheels is the minor premise. Now what have we left out of the vocabulary we've just been talking about? The most important part, and that is the middle term. The middle term, of course, is squidgems. The middle term appears in both premises, but not in the conclusion. It's called the middle term because it's going to tie the major term and the minor term together. Okay, that's the vocabulary we need to move on and take a look at Aristotle's six rules. I've given you, there we go. Let me move myself out of the way. I don't like being the center of attention, but I'll put myself down here. Okay, so I'm not blocking anything. Uh, up here, we have our six rules, which we'll be working through. Over here, I have that uh, simplified diagram of the distribution of terms for A, E, I, and O uh, uh, propositions. And so if you um, are still lost about this term, you need to go and do some reviewing. But uh, I know most of you are up and are tired of me talking about other students needing to go and do reviewing. So we're going to be moving on and looking at Aristotle's six rules. All right, on page 243, we're going to start working through Aristotle's six rules. We'll start off by making reference to those three syllogisms that we have been looking at, and then we'll look at some others. Okay. Aristotle's first rule, a syllogism must have three and only three terms. Well, when we come back here and look at our uh, the three syllogisms we have been looking at, each of them has three terms. We pretty much already covered that. A syllogism must have three and only three propositions. Okay. Well, I'm not even going to bother to click back. We, we looked at those syllogisms in some detail, and you remember they each have three propositions. Now, here's a big one. The middle term must be distributed at least once. What's the middle term? The middle term is a term which does not show up in the conclusion. That's what the middle term is. And now our third rule is the middle term must be distributed at least once. Let's go back and look at those syllogisms. And let's look at that first syllogism, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. You know what? I slipped up here and got lazy and just kind of assumed proper logical form. Let me go ahead and do it right, because I think that will help everybody, you as well as me. So let's do this in logical form. All that which is a man is that which is mortal. Socrates is a man. All that which is Socrates is that which is a man. Therefore, all that which is Socrates is that which is mortal. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit better for us. Now remember the rule. You see it on page 243. The middle term must be distributed at least once. Now what's the middle term? The middle term is man. Okay. And so it has to be distributed at least once. Well, we know that the first premise is a A statement. All that which is man is that which is mortal. Okay. We know the subject in an A statement is distributed. So the middle term is distributed in the first premise. Right there, it's distributed. The second premise, all that which is Socrates is that which is a man. The middle term is again the same, man, all right, because it's not in the conclusion. All Socrates, the subject, is a man undistributed. The middle term is undistributed in the second premise. But now remember, the rule is 
the middle term must be distributed at least once. And it is distributed at least once. So it meets that rule. Okay. It passes Aristotle's third rule. Okay. Let's take a look at the second um, syllogism here. I'm not going to put that in, logical, in a proper logical format because it's pretty much simply what it is here. Some dogs are mammals, some cats are mammals, There's some, therefore some dogs are cats. All right. So we have um, uh, uh, three terms, three propositions. Okay. The middle term is mammals. Okay. Now we're still on rule number three, which says the middle term must be distributed at least once. So let's see if this passes the rule. The middle term. Our two premises, some dogs are mammals, that is an I statement. Some cats are mammals, that is an I statement. In an I statement we see that both terms are undistributed. So right away we know that this doesn't pass rule number three, because rule number three says the middle term must be distributed at least once, but in an I statement uh, both terms are undistributed. In this sense, mammals is a is the um, predicate for both of these I statements, and in I statements the predicate is undistributed. So mammals is not distributed in the first premise, is not distributed in the second premise, and so it fails Aristotle's third rule. This is not valid. It's not a valid argument. That some dogs are mammals, some cats are mammals, therefore some dogs are cats. You can, on your own, um, use Euler circles and Venn diagrams if you're more of a visual person to figure this out. But um, for those of us who aren't visual per people, and we have to kind of stick with words to work through things, we see that Aristotle's six, rule, six rules work here. Let's take a look at the third syllogism. We're still on rule number three. The middle term is squeegums. We know that the middle term must be distributed at least once. We know that squeegums is the subject of the A statement here. We know that the subject of an A statement is distributed. The middle term only has to be distributed once. And so this passes um, Aristotle's rule number three. Let's go on with um, Aristotle's uh, uh, rules here. Rule number four. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. So rule number four. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. If it is undistributed in the premise, it can't be distributed in the conclusion. Let's look at another set of syllogisms here. Let's take the first one. All whales are mammals. All whales are animals. Therefore, all mammals are animals. Now, our rule is no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. So let's look at our conclusion. We know that in an A statement, the predicate is undistributed. And so animals is undistributed in the conclusion. Now we need to figure out if animals is distributed in the premises. And animals shows up here in the second term, which is also an A statement. We know the predicate is undistributed. But our rule says no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. When we look at our syllogism, the term animals is undistributed in the premise, and it's undis undistributed in the conclusion. That means that this 
syllogism fails Aristotle's fourth rule. Now, each of these terms is true. All whales are indeed mammals. All whales are indeed animals, and all mammals are indeed all mammals are indeed animals. But the um, argument here is invalid. It's logically invalid. It fails Aristotle's fourth rule. Okay. Let's look at the second syllogism here. Remember, we're still on the fourth rule. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. The fourth, sorry, the fourth rule here, as we come back and look at these syllogisms, well, each of these propositions is an E statement. We see that both terms in an E statement are distributed, and so this syllogism f passes Aristotle's fourth rule. No dogs are reptiles, no reptiles are mammals, no dogs are mammals. The, each term is just in the conclusion is distributed and each of those terms is distributed in the syllogism. Aristotle's fifth rule, on page 243 or on the screen, no syllogism can have two negative premises. Let's look at this syllogism here. No dogs are reptiles, no reptiles are mammals, therefore no dogs are mammals. Whoops! This syllogism passed Aristotle's rule four, but it didn't pass Aristotle's rule number five. We have two negative premises. So this argument is invalid because it has two negative premises. Aristotle's rule number six. If one premise is negative, the conclusion must be negative and vice versa. If the conclusion is negative, one premise must be negative. And as we go back and look at uh, our syllogisms, I don't have a good example. Let me come up with one. Okay, I just magically came up with another syllogism here. Again, our rule number six is if one premise is negative, the conclusion must be negative and vice versa. Uh, our third syllogism here on the screen, some dogs are not brown, some mammals are dogs, therefore some mammals are brown. Uh, we don't have a negative conclusion. We do have one negative premise, so we don't have, uh, uh, or rather we would say this syllogism fails Aristotle's rule number six. Okay, let's look at some of the exercises on page 253. You want to keep your finger in page 243 so you can keep looking back to those six rules. The exercise on page 253, let's take number one. Some children smoke. Some who smoke get cancer. Therefore, some children get cancer. Let's go through our three, six rules, Aristotle's six rules. A syllogism must have three and only three terms. Get myself out of the way here. Well, uh, the three and only three terms. Let's not bother going back and looking. A syllogism must have three and only three propositions. You can glance at page 253 and see there's only three and only three. Are three and only three propositions. The middle term must be distributed at least once. That's rule number three. Let's come back to, here we go. What is the middle term? The middle term is the term that doesn't show up in the conclusion. That is smoke. Okay. The rule is the middle term must be distributed at least once. So let's see. Some that which is children is that which smokes. That is an I statement. When we come down here, smoke is the predicate. Some, some that which is children is that which smokes. Smoke is the predicate. The predicate is undistributed, but the rule says it has to be distributed at least once. So let's look at the second premise. Some here, smoke is the subject, but again, this is an I statement, and in an I statement, the subject is not distributed. It's undistributed. And so it fails Aristotle's rule number three, which is the middle term must be distributed at least once. So we don't have to go any further because we've already shown that the argument is invalid. It fails Aristotle's rule number three. 
Let's look at number three on page 253. Peace is good. War is not peace. Therefore, war is not good. This is number three on page 253. Peace is good. War is not peace. Therefore, war is not good. I put it into somewhat logical format here. All peace is good. No war is peace. No war is good. Let's run it through our six rules. Rule number one, there are three terms and only three terms. Rule number two, there are three um, uh, premises, I mean propositions. There are three and only three propositions. Rule number three, the middle term must be distributed at least once. Let's come back and look. The middle term is peace. It must be distributed at least once. Let's take the first premise, all peace is good. That's an A statement. Peace is the subject. We see over on our chart that the subject is distributed in an A statement. The rule says it only has to be distributed once, so we can stop looking at rule number three. But if we keep going, we see that peace shows up as the predicate of the second premise no war is peace. The second premise is an E statement, and in an E statement the predicate is distributed. So in fact the middle term is distributed twice. It only has to be distributed once, but it's already passed rule number three. We just went on for practice and see that in fact it's distributed twice. So rule number four. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. So let's look at our premise. No war is good. No war is good. That is a E statement. No war is good. What terms are distributed? Let's go back to our rule. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. And so we see that no war is good is an E statement. All the terms are distributed. So now we need to go and look at each of the terms and see um, uh, if they're distributed or not. The subject, war, is distributed in an E statement. It's also the subject of no war is peace up here. So it is distributed. Good over here is the predicate of the conclusion. No S is P D. So it's distributed in the conclusion. Is it distributed in the premises? We find good up here. All peace is good. And the word good is the predicate of an A statement, and it's undistributed. Now let's go back and look at our rule. Rule number four, no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion, but the term good is undistributed in the premise, but distributed in the conclusion. So, although this sounds pretty reasonable, in fact, it's an invalid argument. It fails Aristotle's rule number four. You could have done it the other way around. In fact, it might have gone quicker for you, but you might not have seen what I wanted you to see. You could start with just the premises find of the, rather, coming down here, looking for these terms in the argument, seeing whether they're undistributed or not. And if you find an undistributed one, then make sure that it is distributed in the premise, but it's not here. So there are different strategies to work through these rules. Um, you may discover some quicker ones. I'm trying to choose a way of looking at these that guide you through what the rules say. Well, you can keep playing this, uh, this, this game, working through the six rules on the exercises on page 253, 254. You have some real world real world exercises on page 254, 5, 6, 7 of, and the way you do those is you take what the sentences are, the paragraph, whatever you're handed, 
you put that into proper logical format and then um, run them through the six rules. In fact, let's, let's do that. Let's take number 9 on page 255. Page 255 now. Number 9. Mathematics improves the reasoning powers, but logic is not mathematics. Therefore, logic does not improve the reasoning powers. Let's take the first sentence. This is actually kind of an easy one because they broke it up into, or Creech broke it up into three sentences for us, each one of which is a proposition. Any honest man admits his rival's virtues. So let's put that into logical format. Well, first we know what the, we need to figure out what the conclusion is, but this one's again pretty easy because it has the word therefore in it, so it tells us that the last sentence is the conclusion. All right, so that's what we should have done first, is to find the conclusion, but this one was pretty easy. So let's now work with the premises. Mathematics improves the reasoning powers. Let's put that into logical format. That would be all that which is math is that which improves the reasoning powers. Okay. Our second premise logic is not mathematics. What could we say here? Let's do a little review. We could say all that which is logic is not mathematics. Now we could say that, but that's not one of our logical forms, right? Remember, all the way back to logical form, we've got the logical forms down here and we don't have an is not. So we have to reword this to fit into one of our four forms without changing the meaning. So when we say that all logic is not math, what we're also saying at the same time is no which is math is logic. Okay. And so our conclusion is Therefore, logic does not improve the reasoning powers. It would be no logic is that which improves. Okay. Now let me, in fact, I'll hit pause here while I look at this and make sure that I got this right, because just like you, I have to work through these every time. So I'm going to hit pause, see if it's right. Okay, it looks right to me, and so let's get started. And if a problem pops up, I'm perfectly happy to admit it, but I don't see one. But let's go ahead and get started. Now, rule number one is we have uh, three terms, only three terms. Yes, we have three terms, only three terms. Rule number two is we have, um, let's, uh, syllogisms must have three and only three propositions. Yes, we have three and three propositions. Rule number three. The middle term must be distributed at least once. See, the first two rules are usually pretty quick to go through. The middle term must be distributed at least once. Let's come down and look. What is the middle term here? You're right. The term math. The math is the subject of this premise. The uh, An A statement. We know the subject of an A statement is distributed. The rule is the middle term must be distributed at least once. So it's already passed rule number three. We see, though, that it's also distributed in the second premise, because the second premise is an E statement, and the subject is distributed in an E statement. We didn't need to do that. I just did that to help move you, move you through the process. We already figured that it passed rule number three. Now rule number four. No term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. So first, do we have any terms that are distributed in the conclusion? Well, we know that no logic is that which improves, blah, blah, blah. This is an E statement. Both terms are distributed, so we need to make sure that each term is distributed in the premise. Logic shows up over here in the E statement, no, that which is math is that which is logic. We know that in an E statement, each term is distributed. The rule says that if it's distributed in the conclusion, it must be distributed in the, in the premise. And in fact, it is. 
that which improves the reasoning skills, is the predicate of the conclusion. The conclusion is an E statement. We know that that which improves is distributed in the conclusion. So now we need to make sure that it's distributed in the premise. We come up here, all that which is math is that which improves the reasoning skills. It's the premise of the A statement, but it's, uh-oh, undistributed. The rule says no term that is undistributed in the premise may be distributed in the conclusion. Well, our term is undistributed up here, but it's distributed in the conclusion. So it fails Aristotle's fourth rule and is invalid. Well, that's about as much as my brain can take, probably as much as your brain can take. So um, look, keep these six rules uh, in front of you as you do the exercises, as you take the assignments. All right. And of course, as always, if you have questions, let me know.